hey, let's talk about calculating a mean and standard deviation by hand. This is not something you wanna do on a real regular basis, but you need to have done it a few times in order to have an idea of what the heck a standard deviation is. So let's take a look. Here's a sample problem. We're given a table with the values and their frequency. The values here are two, three, four, five, and six. And the frequencies are given as two, four, four, zero, and one. This data set is what this table with the frequencies represents. The frequency is how many that times that value showed up in the data table. And this is all put nicely in order, but in real life, of course, it's not gonna come up all nicely sorted out like this. So it's really great to go through and organize. This is like a tally sheet. Let's see, I had two show up two times and then three, well, there were one, two, three, four, threes and so on. Now, if we were gonna get our mean, remember that the mean is the sum of the X's divided by the number of X's. It's the sum of all the numbers divided by the number of numbers. You know how to calculate an average. That's all an, a mean is, is that kind of average where you add up all the numbers and then divide by the number of numbers. This symbol right here is used to represent uh, the sum of. So a sigma represents the sum of. It means add up all your x's and divide by the number of x's, where n equals the number of x's. Now, another way to get the sum of the x's, instead of saying 2 plus 2 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3, we could just say 2 times 2 plus 4 times 3 plus 4 times 4. Well, that's what x times the frequency is. To get x times the frequency, that gives us the 2 plus times 2 and the 3 times 4 and the 4 times 4 and so on. So our x's, our data values, multiplied by how many times they showed up will give us a partial set here. So this adds up to 4, this adds up to 12, and so on. So here is our 4. Multiply 2 times 2, 3 times 4 is 12, 4 times 4 is 16, 5 times 0 is 0, because there weren't any 5s. 6 times 1 is 6. So our average is to take the sum of the x's times the frequency of the x's. So the, it's the sum of the xf's, x times f. So it's like taking the four plus the 12, plus the 16, plus the six, which is exactly what's here. That's gonna be 20, 32, 38. And then you divide by n, which is the number of x's. The number of x's is the same as the frequency. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. When you take the frequency, which is the number of each of these, that's going to again add up to 10, 11. So x bar can be written as the sum of the xf's divided by n. This meant not add up the x x's, but add up all of these x's. 
one at a time. Whereas this means, so it's not add up this column, but this means add up each X times the number of times it occurred, the XF, which is going to be 38 divided by 11. Notice this also adds up to 38 divided by 11, which comes out to 3.45454545, which we'll round it off to 3.45. So this is our mean. Now, what a standard deviation is, is how far each number differs from the average. Two is 1.45 away from the average. Three is only 0.45 away from the average. The standard deviation is the average of the deviation of each element from the mean. In other words, it is a measure of how far from the averages each number falls. So if the average is 3.45, then the distance each of these x values falls from the average this one's going to be a negative 1.45. Three is a negative 0 0.45. Four is a positive 0 0.55. Five is 1.55. And six is 2.45. It's the, take you to get the distance that the number is from the average of the numbers. To get the average distance that each number is from the average number, you would add up each of these times the frequency. So this difference occurs four times, or sorry, two times. This difference occurs four times and so on. The problem is, that your negatives will cancel out your positives and give you an overall of zero, even if there's a drastic difference between your number and uh, the average. So what they do to keep the negatives from canceling out the positives is rather than simply get the absolute value, they square them and then they go back and take the square root. Squaring it does away with the negative and then taking the square root does away with the squaring. So the formula for the standard deviation, keep in mind that the formula for the average is to get the sum of the x times f's divided by n. The formula for the standard deviation is to get the sum of the x minus x bars squared times f and take the square root of that but then, because it's a little bit inaccurate and they're actually using the sample standard deviation instead of the population standard deviation, because we rarely ever have a whole population to work with, then they divide by n minus one instead of n, because it makes, makes the number slightly larger, but it still gives you a pretty good idea of how far away from the average number each of your x values falls. And remember, it's not just how far away two is, because we've got two twos, and we've got four threes. And so on two occasions, 
we had a number that was 1.54 below the average. We never had a number that actually fell 1.55 above the average. So again, they're gonna take this times the number of times it happens, the frequency. So we multiply the F. Well, first we have to square it. Okay, so we're gonna take the X minus X bar and we're gonna square each of those. And then we're gonna multiply each of those values, each of the squares times the frequency 2.10, lost it, 25.002025. And I would definitely encourage you to actually set up a table of your values like this and not try to do this stuff in the calculator if you're gonna be doing it by hand. Later on, as you get more numbers, uh, you will always do this kind of stuff using technology. You're not gonna work through the formula on you know, a big basis here. Okay, so this times the frequency, well, this one's frequency is just once. So 6.5025. This one occurred zero times, that's easy. This one occurred four times. So there were four times that we had a number where the distance squared between the number and the average, the distance squared was 0 0.3025. So we're gonna multiply that by four, 1.21. Now, for my formula, I need to add all of these up. So 4.205 plus 0.81 plus 1.21 plus 6.5025 equals 12.7275. So this is this part. This is the numerator of the formula. It's the sum of the difference between the number and the average squared times the frequency that it occurred. So this is the sum. We're gonna take this, we're gonna divide it by N minus one well, n was 11, so we're gonna divide this by 10 and then take the square root. So we've got 12.7275 divided by 10, take the square root of that, 1.12816 dot, dot, dot. So to round this to one decimal place, is 1.1. Working out standard deviation by hand or by calculator is not something you'd want to do on a regular basis, but it's still a good idea to know how the calculations come about and where the formula comes from. Talk to you later. Until then, bye.